Good morning. Uh, so now my match thoughts on England versus Croatia the morning after. Yes, the uh, yeah. game went into overtime. It did not go to penalties. So um, I was happy about that because that would have been a little bit too much. But yeah, it was still too late to make a proper vi video. I was not coherent anymore. So I've got some sleep. can give you my thoughts now. Um, as you can tell, Croatia made it to the final and yeah, I don't know where they pulled those energies from. But let's first again, like with the France-Belgium semi-final, uh, let's talk about the jersey matchup first. Um, I really thought England will play in red. It makes all the sense in the world that they played in white, all white. I think it looked good. I tried to figure whether they had the England crest also ghosted out on their jerseys, uh, on their pants. Um, I couldn't really see that, but probably because I couldn't see it, that means they have. So yeah, I'm not too crazy about this uh, ghosting out. But other than that, I think England in all white uh, looks also sharp. I like it better with navy pants, but of course they were never gonna wear these and all white looks great. Um, Part of me really would like to have seen them uh, play in red again because to me this is kind of the classic I don't know the England kit is white I know but since they won the World Cup in red <laughs> it's a little bit more classic to me I I don't, I don't know I, I don't know why I, there was always some, some, something about the red England kit it also um, if you look at the flag the St. George's Cross. It makes a whole. It made more sense to me to have England in red than in white. But yeah, uh, I like the white kit or the white jersey, uh, especially this year, better than uh, the red one. And yeah, that gets me to the other thing. I was so excited yesterday. I got the news that I can pick up my new England jersey. I uh, was very excited about that, um, went after work to the store, uh, picked it up, it was in a package, drove home uh, and when I opened it, they sent me a youth size jersey. Uh, it was deflating, to be honest. Uh, but the good news is, um, I can send it back. and. And since we already know that Croatia made it to the final and England lost, um, there is a store here, a uh, sports store, where they sell the jerseys of the eliminated teams for half price. And I'm planning to go there today. I will be a little bit like a kid in a candy store. And I saw earlier this week that they have England jerseys. So I'm going to save another couple of bucks on my new England jersey and that makes me happy again although I really would have liked to have it have had it yesterday but yeah that was kind of the first disappointment and then yeah the second it was not a disappointment because, because we knew I still don't like those Croatia kids they're way too dark way too dark uh, I think one uh, blog on sport uniforms mostly American ones um, I think uh, Uniwatch calls those uniforms black for black sake. It, they're not entirely black, but I don't like. I really, really, really don't like them. And I know that part of it, why uh, the part of the reason why I don't like it, because I like this combination, this color combination, so much. I really think that this is one of my favorite combinations. Uh, in world soccer, uh, in international soccer, I should say. Um, I, there's just something about this blue and those, uh, the jacket pattern appearing that I absolutely adore. Yeah, but it was not to be. We have this black with navy or steel. It, is, it almost looks steel gray, to be honest. So we have them. I don't, I don't need to like them. Let's put it that way. And they are 
now the successful uniforms for Croatia. I think all the success will, will be tied to that uniform and I'm afraid that Nike will keep on churning kits in this color combination. And for me the kicker are the Red Sox. I mean, uh, when they played against Russia in the all black, I think I can somewhat get behind that. Not a big fan, but at least I know what they are. It looks a little bit cohesive, but the Red Sox are just a killer with it. I don't know. And uh, the weird thing is I like those colors. I spend a lot of minutes uh, <laughs> on my channel uh, railing against these uniforms. They are just horrible. They are just really, 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 really horrible. Yeah, so let's get to the game. Uh, the game was a really exciting one. It was not the high-class uh, teams that were playing each other and that you could see with France and Belgium. The skill level was not quite there and you could see this but this made it uh, even more in interesting because it was a more direct, more open play. Uh, you know, the France squad gets a lot of flack because they have all the skill in the world but they don't need to, uh, they use it kind of in a very economical way. They don't need to, they don't need to waste their en en energies because they have so much skill that they can easily keep the ball off the opponent or that they can kill off a game if need be. So um, in that sense, yeah, it was probably better to see a little bit more direct open game and it started bam right in the first few minutes. England from the start took control of the game and then they got a free kick right at the edge of the box, very central. And I remember uh, call, call, call my wife and tell her, come, I think England's gonna score. Bam, they scored. 3PA, wonderful free kick. Yes, maybe the Croatian wall was could have jumped higher and could have had the heads a little bit tighter, but I fit right uh, next to that, next to the player, and it went into the net. Uh, I always love free kick goals, and it was a great start to the game. And you could really see that England was suddenly they went already high in and they were higher. Uh, they were flying at that moment and it took a lot of effort of uh, Croatia to not fall apart right there and then. Um, England really had, I think, it felt like England uh, wants to eat uh, Croatia alive. They ran at them, they created chances, Croatia barely got anything cohesive together. Um, there were, yeah, at most quarter chances for Croatia, but it was all England in the first half. Um, trying to remember, this uh, game was quite, quite eventful. I mean, they, um, there were many scenes where, you know, it was almost scores, a little bit like yesterday, France-Belgium, but the one, of course, is Harry Kane, where he suddenly uh, is in the clear. He has his shot saved by uh, the goalkeeper. And then um, he gets it again, puts it against the post and the goalkeeper, and then it goes somewhere out. And yeah, I think if England makes that, England is in the final. And I somehow have to say that um, as much as I like this England squad, I'm, I, have, I was a little bit disappointed of Kane's performance uh, of late. If he is a central strike and he's gonna be winning the golden boot at this World Cup, I don't think that anyone will come close to his tally anymore. So he's gonna win the golden boot, uh, but this is down to three penalties and one weird deflection. And then there was, of course, two after free kicks. Uh, the one from open play where he got the ball at, uh, at his heel that this counts for him is a little bit of a travesty but this will probably end, uh, be the decisive one that will earn him the boot. Um, I don't know, I expect, I expect a little bit more of him to be honest, at least to get, uh, to get another goal and if he's this great striker, poacher or whatever that he probably aspires to be then honestly, this is a chance that he has to make. No indictment, 
really I I think he is he is the captain of, of the side he provides a lot of work for the England side but I think for a true striker uh, especially one that wins a golden boot with no goal scored in uh, the knockout stage it seems to be a little bit more I think I can get so much more behind all the other players on the England squad uh, but from a star player I don't want to call him superstar I need to actually I think Ronaldo and Messi are superstars Neymar is probably getting up there Griezmann could get up there uh, but that's about it in my for in my of my, my, my opinion so, for so far and yeah uh, Kane is the star player he is the one that everyone knows uh, of that England team and yeah I think um, as of late, he is either unlucky, not not in form, it's just not happening for him, uh, or he cannot give more. It's that's the only downer for me for uh, for this England side. Um, that yeah, there's not more coming from him, and I think this was a chance that he gotta make, uh, and if he makes it, England is through. To the I don't think Croatia would uh, will come back. Yeah, but still, England felt very confident after the first half I'm sure uh, they thoroughly dominated Croatia uh, and this is even more um, remarkable because as I said yesterday the Croatian midfield is probably the best midfield in this entire World Cup the players that they have in there it's just staggering that a small nation of four million people can have such a wealth of world-class absolutely world-class players and you know everyone's saying yeah Croatia is a small nation and we want to see the superstars and uh, all the other midfields are great as well uh, it's Belgium and uh, Belgium for instance or France look at the clubs where the Croatian midfield is playing especially the center two Rakitic and Modric Real Madrid and Barcelona you may say what you want but those are the two best teams in the world uh, and if you are integral part of the best teams of the world, then you are absolutely, absolutely world class. And for that reason alone, the Croatian midfield, names only, is the best that they have. And I wondered for a long time that they didn't make more out of that. Um, then uh, the other thing that I was ev evident in the first half. Uh, on the Croatia side is that Vida, yes, he will get booed every time he touches the ball from now on for somewhat stupid remarks about Ukraine. I know he has played there and yes, I don't want to get into politics. Um, the, only the, the only reason I'm saying this is because you're the only Eastern European Slavic team remaining. So. I think you always had the sympathy of the Russian crowd and then you pull something like that and yeah I don't think that the Russians have anyone to cheer for really this World Cup anymore maybe Belgium but they're out so uh, if you want to get the neutral crowd behind you don't do stupid things like this no matter how you feel inclined and that's the other, that's the other thing that I always feel with Croatia the one thing that bugs me, that I really love their team and how they can play and the talent that they have, have there. It's just, there's so much noise coming from the fans that is uh, disgraceful. And, you know, for all the politics, they don't hide it. Uh, and that's the one thing that was always a downer for me for Croatia. Uh, same thing for Serbia and all the other former Yugoslav teams. But yeah, getting back to the game. So the second half starts and there is not much at the beginning I, the game was a little bit asleep I think the first half was very lively uh, a lot of things happening uh, but England clearly dominating and I guess they spent a lot of energy and uh, probably wanted to take it slow but in that process what happened was that the Croatian midfield suddenly got confidence and could assert dominance over the field. Um, I said it yesterday in my preview, um, just for physical exhaustion I am taking England over Croatia and also the way they have been playing was much more convincing 
but uh, without all that baggage, I would rate the Croatian team higher. And in the second half, they suddenly asserted themselves. And it was a slow build. It was first a little bit neutralizing of England here and there, then um, maybe getting a few passes. Um, and suddenly there was also that, you know, Perisic got a little bit more into play, Rakitic was working endlessly, Modric pulled the uh, game towards himself. Uh, the wingers, Vida and Rosaiko, came a little bit up, slowly, slowly, slowly. And the funny thing was just at the time when the commentator was saying, yeah, uh, if this reminds uh, I hope this, he hopes that this is not really a repeat for the English he hopes I mean he was really true of course that it will not be a repeat of the Colombia game where England dominated or had control over the game for 70 minutes and then they lost control he just had said that Rosaiko makes the uh, cross into the box and Perisic uh, yeah does a karate move to put it into the net uh, I don't think it was uh, the leg was too high. Uh, it was more, but it, it was high, but I, I, it was not unfairly high because he clearly went for the ball. It was not dangerous. I, I never thought this was dangerous play, to be honest. And the ball is in, in the net, and I thought this is now a character test for this young English squad again. Uh, that they actually survived against. Uh, Colombia but this was a slightly different opposition because now you could see the belief in Croatia coming and coming and coming and just a few minutes later Perisic has another glorious chance and hits the post again uh, inside of the post at these times it doesn't come out parallel it comes out uh, more straight but I felt for Perisic at that moment uh, that would have been the game as well same and it's the same as uh, Kane hits the other post the near post Perisic hits the far post and yeah those were two moments that we, if you lose the game uh, those are the moments that will haunt you forever uh, Croatia had more chances England uh, tried to get something going in the last few minutes but uh, you could clearly see and feel that they had lost control of the game Croatia now had control of the game and suddenly kept pulling energies as I said at the beginning of this video I don't know where they pulled those energies from I think this was sh uh, sheer will nothing else this was just pure will getting it trying to get something great going trying to eclipse the shadow of the 98 generation the one that uh, got third place uh, at the first World Cup showing uh, and it, I really felt that Croatia probably could, could and probably should have won it uh, in regu regulation. Uh, they were suddenly that dominant and England was on the back heel. Uh, Southgate made some substitutions and this came back to bite him. I think he wanted to inject some um, new fresh blood. I mean he got Rashford on for Raheem Sterling who was actually tirelessly working again and also if Kane the chance that he had he might have been offside at the shot and that's why the offside was given I think that uh, the first shot of Kane was not offside but once uh, Kane made the shot and it came off you saw the referee or the linesman uh, lifting the flag uh, for offside so Sterling would, would have been offside but he was right there a little bit more um, thought at that moment on both players side could have made this goal as well because he was unmarked completely unmarked yeah uh, and I think Perisic shot came off Rebic uh, couldn't really convert it he got it on goal but Pickford saved it uh, and then there was uh, another situation where I think it was Stones who put Pickford in a really tricky situation um, yeah, they were chances, uh, but the game went to overtime and it was kind of a... Ah, I was hoping that we won't have another overtime and I honestly, I think Croatia too. They would have been so happy to win this in regu regulation. 
and uh, the other thing I think the happiest of the entire bunch were the French yes we get a team that uh, had to have it to play at least two overtimes while we more or less cruised into the final uh, I hope for the French that they don't use this um, to uh, to get a little bit too certain of themselves but yeah overtime started and at first it was typically overtime uh, the teams tried to feel themselves but it quickly got uh, interesting again especially Croatia got suddenly chances I think it was again Rosako where Pickford made a great save on him uh, to save England and then there was also a huge header after a corner kick and I love English cor corner kicks and I already see uh, other teams will copy that and I love it because uh, it looks like an NFL play I love Amer and I love the NFL I love American football a lot so uh, this route running uh, it's it's something else I really really loved it so yeah they have their uh, they're trying to get their routes going and Stones makes a header that should have seen the back of it and I think again it was for Psycho not sure about that now who saved it he was he was a very uh, his presence was quite felt in that uh, game but that was the last thing that we saw from England uh, and by the time crucially Southgate already had made four substitutions uh, whereas Croatia waited until overtime to make the substitutions and I think this was smart because Delic clearly wanted to see uh, not getting in, in a tricky situation where he cannot then exchange players anymore uh, so he waited and he made quite some substitutions then because his players were spent and he needed to inject some fresh blood in the over, over, over time and it was good because in the second overtime Croatia had the game in the bag you saw the uh, experience of Croatia playing the dividends uh, they were a better squad a more experienced squad and they used this to, to, to their advantage and then uh, the goal by Mandzukic a pure striker's goal uh, ball comes in and he just gets the uh, separation from from the defender puts it in the back of the net and I would have liked of course that England rallies itself but it felt like they're finished and so it was and Croatia with a lot of routine I don't think England had another shot at goal even and Croatia had at that point I think they, they had to say seven to one shots on goal um, that was the one statistic that really baffled me a little bit because England was so so dominant but yeah Croatia had a lot more shots on goal at that point and yeah now the shots on goal statistic is not that great one uh, let's uh, be clear about that because you know even a uh, uh, half chance that goes direction of goal counts as a shot on goal but yeah uh, Croatia played it home safely and made it to the final uh, it is the first Eastern European nation since 62 to make the final of a World Cup. 62 was the Czechoslovakia. Uh, the first from Southeastern Europe. Uh, I'm very happy for them, to be honest. Uh, this squad needed, uh, had always the talent to make it that far. Maybe a little bit of luck along the way, but yeah was a great thing to see and I think the celebrations were there as I said uh, I think France is the happiest of all the teams uh, because they will get a tired opponent but so did England uh, I was wrong I think it was wrong Croatia pulled energy somewhere from nowhere and it was also uh, yeah the other thing why they couldn't do more is because Trippier had already made four substitutions Trippier was injured couldn't play anymore heartbreaking to see I would like that maybe there is if FIFA could make a rule that you know if the coaches decide let's make another substitution that it could be done or uh, I know it's a tactical gamble it's maybe for me more the empathy that uh, wants to see that I know that if you make such a mistake yeah you cannot do if you make your substitutions early you always put yourself in a vulnerable position so yeah so it happened but yeah, it was a riveting game. N 
as I said, the skill level was not as great as for Belgian Frost. That was a riveting game that I really enjoyed watching. I literally couldn't take my eyes off it. Uh, there was a lot of things happening. And again, congratulations to Croatia. Um, we have a lot of, I already saw two cars with Croatian flags up there. A small country, smallest country since Uruguay in 1950 to make the World Cup final. Lots of lots of credit to that. Croatia might be the most successful nation when you take into account um, population size. It's simply amazing uh, to me. Well, I hope you liked my take on England versus Croatia. I hope you enjoyed that game as much as I did. If you're from England, of course, you're probably feeling a little bit sad today. I fully can un uh, understand that for about 60 minutes you looked good to go to the final. But then, yeah, inexperienced to Govar. I am sure um, I will post more on my thoughts, but these were my immediate thoughts to that game. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.